Welcome to In Dialogue. The host here is a well-known gentleman of our community, Mr. Bharat Bhargav. Today he has alongside him the chairman of US and PAC, the well-known Mr. Sanji Puri. Let's hear these two personalities engaged in their interviews in the famous segment called In Dialogue. Namaste, I'm Bharat Bhargav and thank you for joining In Dialogue. As you know, we say in our program, we provide information, we provide entertainment. Sometimes we get mixed up and start providing entertaining information. But today I have very clear thinking and I want to provide you information, information of great value to you. I have as my guest, Mr. Sanjay Puri. His name is well known in India, in the US. But I felt that there are things that he has been doing that I want to make sure that our viewers get a real focus on and this is why I have invited him to be with me. But Sanjay Saab, welcome. Thank uh, you. Uh, thanks for joining us in our okay. program. You know, you have been written up in New York Times, Washington Post, you have spoken CNN, even Harvard, Duke and Wharton. So I figured now you're ready for prime time and be on, on, in dialogue. Well, levity aside, uh, I really do think um, uh, uh, Sanjay Saab's work has been such that it's, it, it has not only done a profound, uh, created profound results, but it has great potential. So I'm so happy we have a chance to speak to you ab about all your things. And I don't know how you even juggle so many things as, as we will, viewers will see. But let me start one at a time because there are so many things. U.S. impact. U.S. India Political Action Committee. Now, everybody knows what a political action committee is in terms of generically, but each committee has, PAC has different agenda, different approaches. What is the objective agenda? What was it when you started, what, about 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, Burji, firstly, obviously, thank you very much for uh, inviting me over My to pleasure. this program. Uh, and uh, when you talk about me doing things, firstly, I presume your viewers uh, know the good work that you've done over not just months, years, but decades. And uh, uh, the community is much better. And we, a lot of people who have done good things are riding on your shoulders. So thank you for what you do. Well, thank and uh, I'm here, obviously, in respect of you and your work. Uh, in terms of U.S. impact, I. You know, there was a moment in time, obviously, the past uh, becomes a blur because, uh, you know, attention span is so small. Uh, maybe 10 years ago when, uh, you know, India used to get bashed uh, constantly on mm. Capitol Hill, we had a congressman who used to uh, just hammer in their uh, congressman, Dan Burton. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of other uh, people in Congress. And then Indian Americans as a group never had a voice. Our political interaction was you know, members of Congress would come and we'd get pictures. So if an issue like immigration or uh, security issues ever came, we didn't have uh, a consolidated voice. So, you know, after seeing India get bashed constantly, we decided let's see if we can form some kind of a grassroots, some kind of an activity movement that uses the tools, the techniques that many special interests like the Jewish community, the business community have done and apply it and obviously I think uh, rest Results have shown the U.S.-India relationship is uh, tremendously different. Uh, Dan Burton has become a friend. Uh, the U.S.-India nuclear deal is passed. We have two governors of Indian origin. There are tons and tons of staffers. And that's not just because of U.S. impact. I think US, there's sometimes you match uh, is lit and then everything else gets bright around it. Absolutely. And I think that's what uh, happened and I'm happy to have played a small part like you have played in the community. Well, the, no, you, the U.S. impact has a membership, I, I know, uh, countrywide, and uh, you have personally, and, and the organization has had relationship in administration, Congress here, but even importantly, uh, with Indian leadership. And you see that uh, I, I, there is another organization we'll come to, but with respect to U.S. impact, is there any Indo-US aspect to it when you're working with the uh, Indian leadership? There is some aspect where you are able to stimulate some dialogue, some action? 
Uh, you know, the uh, people always ask us, what are the issues we deal with? Right. Uh, my answer always is it depends on the generation of our members. Mm. Our first generation is very, very focused on the U.S.-India relation, uh, and that is of primary importance. And I think uh, even now the second generation is coming to realize that uh, if United States has to succeed, India is a big democracy. It's a big uh, economic opportunity. So the, we do interface with India. We are American citizens. It's an American organization. but. We make sure that the Indian leadership, which looks to the diaspora constantly for political empowerment, for economic uh, help, gets our perspective on what uh, the American policymakers are thinking so that they, if they want investments from us, if they want uh, help or assistance in some areas, they need to make sure that they are following or at least listening to the perspective that we have. So that's the view that we mm -hmm. provide. And, and just looking ahead, uh, although every day is different, so you have to respond to what comes, mm -hmm. but looking ahead, are there certain things you are thinking about strategically? What are the things that could be addressed? And related with that, uh, as the viewers are listening to you, are there things, something they need to know so they could play a more active part in things that you've been doing or plan to do? Well, uh, again, the U.S.-India relationship has matured quite a bit, uh, but there are you know, strategic interests that the United States has and that involve India. Uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan is going to impact the mm -hmm. United States because uh, there's a whole security issue, but it's going to also impact India. So we have real uh, interest as uh, two nations in making sure that the transition is done right. Mm. Then the whole issue of cyber uh, terror mm. also involves India and United States because mm. uh, we both have a lot at stake because the future wars are going to be uh, faced there. Then there's this whole issue of labor movement. There's an immigration bill that's going on which impacts the United States because we want talent but we want to protect our borders. India is looking to have an open regime for its technology first. Mm. So there are lots of issues now. Obviously there are issues of hate crimes, there are issues of you know getting more Indian Americans like Ami Bera into Congress and more uh, governors like Bobby Jindal or Nikki Haley. Mm. Unfortunately uh, uh, one of our brightest stars, mm. Anish mm. uh, Kunmi make it, but I always, uh, as I believe, uh, it's not the end, it's the beginning for a nation. It's not the end, uh, so absolutely. I think those are some of the things. That's so wonderful. And you know, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, transition to your other organization because I do feel that even though there are two distinct organizations, mm -hmm. there, is a f there is a synergy uh, between the two, especially in the context that I also believe, and uh, listening to you, uh, I know you more than me believe that, that U.S. and India have both the responsibility and opportunity to provide leadership together to so many world issues. Who else can play the kind of role? But U.S. has been doing a lot of things alone, and India is ready. Uh, in so many ways, it's not ready. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in, at the macro level, it is. So uh, I come to your other organization, OSIB, you call it, the, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the Alliance for U.S. India Business. US -India business. What have been, what's the, what are the objectives of that one and what has been happening there? Well, you know, the focus was um, that uh, when we look at the U.S.-India trade, people always say it's, it's, it's great. But if you really strip it down, uh, it could be a lot more. It could be twice as what the trade is. Um, and so our focus has been large companies like GE and Walmart will find their way to India. Mm. But when you go down to small mid-sized companies in Ohio, Tennessee, in Illinois, et cetera, they are the ones, in many cases, they've not even gone outside their state. How do you get them to consider India as an opportunity? Mm. So we decided that we take trade missions. So the states actually hire us. Uh, the governors come with us. We've done over 25 state missions. Wow. And they uh, bring a trade mission to India. And then they talk to their counterparts. We arrange uh, for them to have matchmaking. We arrange for them to have dialogue and then do follow on. Mm -hmm. And then we do the same with India is bringing mm. uh, missions from here. The perspective is that if small, medium sized businesses as 80% of the economy here is driven by those. Mm -hmm. And if you start matching the entrepreneurial skills in India, good things are bound to happen. Wow. And so that's, I think, the perspective. The potential is tremendous, no question Absolutely. about it. One, one tidbit, I understand you have also helped some movie makers uh, uh, being able to, Bollywood being able to do some work here as a result of some alliances you were able to help them form. 
Uh, yeah, we have a uh, agreement with the Film Producers Guild in India. Wow. So when they want to shoot movies, they're always looking, uh, hey, we're going to come in, we're going to create jobs here, can we get incentives? So, you know, if they want to shoot in Philadelphia, so we have the city of Philadelphia uh, giving them incentives or whether it's in Chicago, etc. So we helped them, we hosted them, we hosted India Pavilion at the American Film Market. So we do some of those things. You know, it's a powerful industry, but uh, facilitating here can make such a big difference for them because they can't Absolutely. do that from there. Mm -hmm. I, I know considering uh, the activities you're involved in, you have a large business. I know you've been running for 20 years, Optimus. And, and uh, I, I, we may not get into the business part so much, but I have marveled and now I've come to the conclusion what it is. For 20 years, you have been running a successful business, which has allowed you the flexibility to get involved in other things in some ways. But at the same time, I wonder, you can run those business, that's those two big businesses and still give time to it. Any secret that you want to share with people? Uh, ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's that will always work. So you, you just go from one to other not knowing what's happening. Absolutely. You know, the channel other, surfing, that's what I call <laughs> that's it. That's right, okay. Speaking of channel surfing, um, um, I am, I, I was, uh, first of all, um, I have to say, uh, I, I salute uh, your lovely wife, uh, Parna. Uh, she, she's amazing right now. Uh, I know, uh, I have to just go ahead and say, I know she's very busy with some a very huge project, but we're we're looking forward to you being our neighbors very very soon, matter of days. But I also met. Um, I'll tell you one day I I met your older son, and I had my granddaughter Chelsea with me. She's 15, and uh, so I introduced and I said, uh, uh, "What's your name?" I had not met him before. He said, "You've arrived." So I had to tell her that you've arrived means crown prince, and he listens to me. Says. Uncle, that's just for name. So I said, so what are you, a slave? He said, exactly right. Then I understand why he gave me that answer before I could even finish my sentence. He, he does stand-up comic at this young age. Uh, yeah, and most of his material is about his dad. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Smart I, I don't know if I really like his career choice because he's... Uh, 16 and I have to escort him because he's underage <laughs> and I have to listen to him ribbing about me so I don't know if it's the best profession uh, for somebody uh, hopefully uh, like him. And, and then uh, you must have been a child prodigy yourself because you're even younger one does DJ work what is he what is he the 12 or something? Uh, he's 13. 13 he's focused on making money and he figured out that might be the quickest way uh, knowing Indian parties that if he can just uh, DJ and make a few extra bucks uh, that will make him he says I'm financially independent I'm that's just, so I'm wonderful. just renting from him. <laughs> yeah okay well that's so wonderful Isn't it just so good that you could Such be, a pleasure. Just, uh, be with us uh, thank you very much for joining in dialogue uh, look us up on www.indialogue.net for all the programs that are upcoming and also about the prior programs. Have a great day.